quickly to escape, smashing through windows. The Whiskey Go-Go Fire in 1973 was written up in the newspaper as the most serious fire in Australia up to that time. For me, it was certainly more death than I'd seen in my career in the fire service. And um, more death than I've seen since the fire service. Normally we had a fires and, and we see lots of flame. There was no flame here. There was only smoke. I think um, because I arrived possibly 15 or 20 minutes after the initial response, I think it was so overwhelming that it was the fact that this was this building totally, totally filled with smoke. Um, we were all wearing breathing apparatus. Uh, visibility was, was next to nil. I was... Uh... Probably one of the last fire engines, on the last fire engines to rock up. When I got there, the fire was out. There's no doubt about that. Well, it was fairly horrendous, actually. Um, yes, there was quite a number of, of bodies involved, of course. Um, the place was being partly ventilated, and, and, and the main process was getting people out. From the upper floor, bring them down on the ladders, lay them out on the street. We had done all this training in various methods of carrying people out of situations just like that. Um, it wasn't quite as easy as what it used to be when we trained. The one up the whiskey, what they'd done there was put two 20 litre drums of petrol in the foyer and uh, touched it all. I don't think there has been another fire with that, with that amount of casualties prior to that or since that. Um, and of course it was eventually found that it was uh, malicious, so that made it all that bit worse. And uh, the flame went straight up the stairs, uh, into the nightclub area, and uh, most of the people there were killed by the smoke, not by the flames. There were supposed to be gangland connections to that and another fire at the Torino restaurant. One Sunday night, right on nine o'clock, we heard an explosion. We were at the uh, Kemp Place fire station and uh, we walked out the front of the station and there was a big glow over the valley and uh, we got turned out to Torino's nightclub. When we got there, it was well alight. The Torino, it would have been the same uh, syndicate that had done that, that was for sure, because uh, it, it was definitely an arson job, Torino's. Two weeks later, the whiskey was firebombed, but that happened on a Saturday night and whereas Torino's was empty, it was full of nightclub patrons. There was huge amounts of anger and, and, and I'm sure there wouldn't have been one fire that was at that fire that wasn't, pl wasn't pleased to see the culprit caught. They eventually uh, charged two people with the murder. Stewart and Finch were uh, found guilty of arson and uh, they were incarcerated. Punishment can never be great enough for an arsonist, I'm sure. All the windows to the outside of one wall where the people could have escaped had been covered with black curtains, so no one knew there was even window there. It seemed to be pretty common conversation around the place that the exit was blocked by the fact that they were using it for a store in. And it wasn't until after that, uh, Whiskey Go Go, that the government passed legislation to give us the right to say, you will do this or you will do that. And there was a lot of places that closed down after that. We, we closed them down, which we couldn't do before. There would have been a lot of good come from it, but at a pretty high price, obviously. My mate's son was one of them who got killed in that fire. Uh, Tommy Day's son. Darcy Day was in the orchestra. Now he was Tom Day's son and Tom was a fireman. Uh, Darcy had two saxophones that his father had made for him and he got up to safety on the roof, but then remembered he left one saxophone behind and went down to collect it, and he never ever came out again. It was a whole sense of numbness, what we had just experienced. The saddest thing that I can recall was, was after the event, they, they had these 15 people, now deceased, just lying out in the footpath. The thing I remember most about that was the 15 bodies laid out in a road up um, along the street, all covered in the white sheets. That's, that memory has 
never left me. It was about the most distressing thing I've ever witnessed in my life. Fire shows no mercy or respect for anybody.